everyone. It is the 2nd of November, Saturday the 2nd. I hope you survived the Halloween <laughs> holiday. Uh, I'm in Oklahoma, uh, where the wind comes a-whooping down the plain. And, uh, hey, there's a Kennesaw. They're not supposed to park there. I hope he's okay. Probably had to take a nap. Anyway, I just want to talk a minute. I'm going to be getting into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13, 14, and 15. These are heavy chapters, heavily debated, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, churches, uh, you know, they get their. Uh, I think they kind of pervert the word of God I have uh, been praying about it I've read so much on uh, the spiritual gifts because when I got uh, saved folks I wanted it um, I wanted everything the Lord would give me and so I actually sought uh, to get the gift of tongues but uh, I never uh, imitated it if that makes any sense I never faked it or anything so I never got it <laughs> I got uh, I got smacked in the head I got you know they laid hands on me and uh, one lady punched me in the stomach <laughs> and uh, I never spoke in tongues and uh, I was you know I was asking the Lord well if there's anything uh, to that I, I want it now I'm not saying that <clears throat> when I was taught in uh, college of course, I went to Bible College, uh, Baptist Bible College, in First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen, yeah, uh, verse eight. Maybe it says, "Charity never faileth," uh, but whether there be uh, prophecy, it shall fail, and knowledge shall be done away, and uh, tongue shall cease. I was taught, uh, and then it goes on. What in the world? That's a chair. Y'all see that? <laughs> uh, I was taught in Bible college that, you know, those three gifts ended at the completion of the Bible. Uh, because it goes on to say, uh, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part will be done away. And uh, their interpretation was that which is perfect is um, the Bible. Because it couldn't be talking about Jesus because he had already come and died and rose from the grave. And then you get the interpretation that it's talking about the second coming. I, uh, and I taught that. I, I mean, I told everybody that. And that's why we don't speak in tongues. But I, you know, I got to tell you, as I matured in the Lord over the years, I, I believe the Lord could uh, give someone the gift of tongues and knowledge and uh, prophecy. Uh, if he willed it, I mean, I don't see how it could stop. But now, you got to define it. Uh, the gift of tongues was only three times in the book of Acts did they speak in tongues. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 10, and Acts chapter 19. Uh, and all three times, it happened differently. Once, uh, the, uh, when the Holy Spirit came, the 120 just started speaking in uh, tongues, and then... In chapter 10, it went to the Gentiles, and uh, as he was preaching, they uh, got the tongues. And then in Acts chapter 19, uh, they laid hands on them, and they got the gift of tongues. But what you got to remember is in all three instances, the gift of tongues, tongues is a language, a human language. Somebody could understand it there. Tongues is for those that believe not, not those that believe. When I was a kid, I wasn't saved. I was, uh, I think I was 12, 13 maybe. And I had a crush on a little girl and uh, she went to a Pentecostal church. And so, you know, to impress her, I went to that church and uh, I mean, this was a holy rolling church, brother. Uh, the pastor later got uh, 
convicted of uh, larceny. I think he was taking money illegally. It was uh, pretty horrendous what he was doing, but uh, they would speak in tongues. Now, the Bible does make it clear they do have rules about it. We're going to get into that in our study of 1 Corinthians, so I'm not going to go into it in detail. But there are rules to speaking in tongues. And one of the rules is never a woman. A woman should keep silent in the church. And that is talking directly in context with speaking of tongues. Uh, So you never should see a woman. The Holy Spirit's never going to fill a woman with the Holy Spirit and her speaking tongues. And there should always be an interpreter, somebody that understands it. Now in Africa, there was a missionary... Now, I forget the name or the details of it, but uh, he was a, an American, and uh, he went to a, uh, was holding a service, and uh, or no, he was at a service, and uh, was a Pentecostal missionary, and he was uh, preaching in uh, their native language, and all of a sudden, a guy uh, stood up that never, couldn't speak English. Uh, and neither could the pastor evidently it was one that was from there and he started speaking in tongues well he was speaking in English and he was blaspheming God and they all were praising the Lord thinking he was uh, you know speaking in tongues and the guy uh, the American missionary went over and said look this guy's blaspheming God and uh, stuff so you got to be real careful uh with the gift of tongues, I'm real leery of it, but I don't, I don't say anymore that it could not happen. I believe if a, a guy was talking to a, a group of people that all spoke a different language and the Holy Spirit was in it, and he wanted them to hear the gospel, and that guy could communicate with them, I believe he could give them the gift of uh, tongues, the gift of another language where he could speak in that language. And uh, knowledge, of course, I believe that uh, it hasn't gone away. And uh, prophecy, I'm real leery of people that say they're prophets anymore. Because Peter said we have a more sure word of prophecy, which is the Bible. So I believe the gift of prophecy is probably uh, just about null and void if it's not altogether uh, null and void. But... uh, yeah, I was taught uh, tongues, the gift of knowledge, and the gift of prophecy have all gone away. And I could go along with the gift of uh, tongues being uh, done away with and the gift of prophecy, but I don't think, I think the Lord still gives uh, knowledge. So I can't, you know, be so dogmatic about that. As long as you realize that it is a language, a human language, he said, now he does say, though I speak with the language of angels, and uh, what he's saying is, though I speak with the uh, language of angels, or uh, though I speak with any kind of language uh, and have not charity, I am nothing. And uh, so I don't think, and a lot of Pentecostals say, well, we're speaking in the language of angels. I've looked into that a lot because, like I said, when I first got saved, I wanted everything uh, the Lord had for me, and I never was given the gift of tongues. And I have been told that because I've never spoken tongues, I am not saved. Uh, and I, uh, I know whom I have believed in, and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I committed unto Him against that day. And I'll tell you what. Uh, if the blood, I believe in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ and that his death, burial, and resurrection and he died on the cross bleeding out for me. He sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat. And if that don't get me to heaven, folks, I don't think nothing will. So, no, I don't believe you have to do anything. I think it's uh, the blood of Jesus Christ plus nothing uh, gets you saved. And uh, I'm, I know, as a matter of fact, I know that's the only way. Uh, uh, but everybody wants to say, well, I did something to help the Lord out. And uh, 
that's okay. They're, they're going to have to stand judgment for that. Now, I don't believe that the Pentecostals are not Christian. I believe they're Christian. I believe they're immature. And I believe they put uh, their feelings and experiences above what the Word of God says. But when I was in that church, I uh, got off topic, sorry. Uh, the man said, anybody want to see a miracle? If you've never seen a miracle, come up front. And dude, I was right up there, right up front. And uh, <laughs> at 12 years old, I knew this guy was a charlatan. Now, I'm not saying all of them are. This guy was. He had a woman that I knew from the church that didn't have crossed eyes. I've, I've seen her every Sunday that I went. He, he pulled her up there, and it was a healing service, so there was a lot of people that didn't go to that church all the time. And she had crossed eyes, and he snapped his fingers, and her eyes straightened out. And that was supposed to be a miracle. And I thought that was hilarious. And then he had one sit down on a chair, and he, she, he had her put her feet out, and uh, he said, one leg's longer than the other. And I mean, come on. The lady was pushing one leg forward and one leg back, and then he said, uh, you know, hocus pocus, hocus pocus, and uh, uh, the other leg pushed forward, and I just cracked up. And even later, I knew the the preacher's son. He was, uh, you know, uh, in their, their band. They had one of those rock bands that they played and those things and uh, I said come on man I know these people though what's going on and then this is what he told me he said well you have to fake miracles like that to give people faith uh, for the real miracle and I wasn't saved at the time didn't have the Holy Spirit and I knew that they were full of crap after that the only reason I went there is to meet that girl and they didn't play out, so I, I got out of that church pretty quick. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so there are uh, charlatans, you know. There, are, uh, Now, can the Lord heal? Yes, He can. Uh, praise God, I believe in miraculous healing. I believe that in the miraculous healer, I don't believe in faith healers. I don't believe there's uh, some guy that just uh, has that gift. I think that... Uh, if you go by the Bible and uh, James, and uh, you pray and anoint them with oil, that the Lord can heal them. But you go through the uh, elders of the church, the presbytery, the Bible says, not not any one man, and he's not just given this uh, miraculous gift. It was given to Paul and the apostles, but this is before the Bible was complete, too. And uh, going to the Jews, they just, uh, desire a sign. In Revelation it says, and in Thessalonians it says, that the man of sin is going to do wonders and uh, uh, miracles and wonders. So you can't just take those miracles as uh, being from God. Remember in uh, remember in uh, Egypt uh, when uh, Moses threw down his staff. Uh, so did. Uh, those two uh, you know, witches or whatever they were from uh, Pharaoh uh, magicians they threw down their staffs and they turned into snakes too uh, so Satan has power to do some uh, miracles but yeah, of course the Lord's staff ate the other two but I mean uh, you can't just take just because somebody doesn't work some miracle uh, don't just go blindly following them. Base everything on that Word of God, folks. Uh, uh, that's the the true prophecy. Peter says, and I can't remember exactly where. Uh, Gypsy, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, but it's in, uh, I think, first or second. Uh, I know it's in first or second Peter, and he says we have a more sure word of prophecy than what they had, and that's the Word of God. And he calls uh, Paul's epistles scripture, too. So anyway, I'm going to do that. Uh, chapters uh, 12 and 13. Uh, but I'm going... I, and I've read everything you can read on it. And uh, as I've grown in the Lord, I've, uh, I've gotten a lot less judgmental of folks. Uh, 
you know, a lot of my Baptist brethren would say, well, the Pentecostals, they're not saved the, and uh, all this stuff. And I, I don't agree with that. I believe they love the Lord. I believe they're trying to do what they think is right. They were raised that way, and they're deceived uh, in the sense that they don't, uh, you know, they're immature. They never uh, actually grow up in the Lord because if you're looking for experience and uh, feelings, you're going to be deceived. Remember uh, Isaac, when Jacob and, uh, went in unto him, Isaac felt his arms and said, You feel like my son Esau, but you sound like my son Jacob. So what uh, what happened was he went by his feelings and not by the word. He went by what he felt and not by what was said. He should have went by the word that he heard. He knew it was Jacob if he would have listened and not felt. So we are to listen to the word of God and uh, feelings can deceive you and often will. Satan will give you uh, feelings uh, oftentimes. I, and we're going to go into the gifts again, the gifts of the Spirit. And one of them is the discerning uh, of the spirits. And uh, I, I truly believe that's one of the gifts that the Lord has uh, given me because usually in a, if you have to be you have to be right with God for it to work but usually uh, five or ten minutes into a, somebody's sermon I can tell you pretty quick if it's of the Holy Spirit or if it's of the flesh you know or if he's uh, being led by the Spirit of God or he's just doing the same sermon he did three weeks ago at another church and going through the repetition I'm not saying they're not saved I'm just saying you know I can tell if the Spirit's in it I can talk to somebody on the street and uh, just about anybody in the South that you meet will say, oh yeah, I'm saved, I'm saved. And I can tell you pretty quick, Not, and I'm not judging them. Uh, it's just my spirit witnesses with them. And you got that gift too uh, if you're a Christian. I, I truly believe that uh, your spirit will witness with another person's spirit. And uh, you can tell pretty quick now look at this guy just pulling right out in front. Come on, come on. This guy's pulled right out in front of everybody. People, man, sometimes people. Anyway, you get the... Uh, lost my train of thought you get the you can tell real quick if somebody's going to say uh, I mean if his spirit witnesses with yours and it, if it doesn't and there's a so many people on this YouTube folks that uh, claim to be Christians I can watch 10 minutes of their video and uh, tell you real quick it ain't of the spirit of God I'm not saying the guy was lost or saved I'm just saying it's not of God what they're talking uh, you ever hear somebody just uh, bad mouthing somebody else and then uh, attacking, you know, their doctrine and this and that? And I, I guess there's a place for that. But if that's the whole purpose of their channel is to attack other Christians, that ain't of God, folks. I have been, I am so convinced of that. And. Uh, I won't call names, but they do. They call names, and uh, they'll tell you, uh, well, this guy is not saved, and he's on his way to hell because he believes in repentance. I've actually heard that about a pastor that I love dearly, uh, and uh, it angered me, and I argued with the guy for a while, <coughs> and then I just hung up. I was like, you know, you're not getting through to him. And uh, then he vicious, <coughs> viciously attacked me. Uh, this is on his channel. And his followers viciously attacked me. Uh, and then I was going to hell because 
I believed in lordship, salvation, whatever that is, and repentance. And uh, I believe in the gospel, and you guys know that. But anyway, you can tell pretty quick if somebody's of God or not. Oh, wow, I'm 20 minutes in. All right, I better get off. Uh, we're going to do 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I am looking forward to it, but I am praying about it. I'm not going to do it till the Lord gives me liberty because I do not want to lead you people astray and I don't want to uh, say something that is not correct. So I've been looking into the... I've read all the commentaries and I'll lay them down and I'm just going to go with the what the Lord gives me and I'm not going to do it until He gives me something. So, all right, folks. Uh, God bless you and have a wonderful day and read those Bibles. It is the most sure word of prophecy. All right, I love you, and God bless you.